Hi, I'm David Ryan Polgar, and I'm oftentimes considered a uh, tech ethicist. Uh, really, what I do is I explore how technology and social media impacts us from an ethical, legal, and emotional perspective. I have a background as an attorney and college professor, uh, but over the years kind of transitioned fully into this space. Really, what kind of happened is uh, in 2012, uh, I noticed that everything I was writing and speaking about was dealing with how social media and technology was, was really dramatically impacting uh, our larger conception of life, right? How we related to our loved ones, uh, how we even thought about ourself, our, our, our self-identity. So I really tried to set out to say, I wanna make this my, my life's purpose, my life's passion. Uh, I do that currently by writing, speaking, and researching about, again, the impacts of technology. Uh, I currently write for Big Think uh, Quartz, which is Atlantic Media, uh, and also IBM Think Leaders. I'm also the head of trust and safety at a Swedish, uh, Swedish social messaging platform called Friendbase, uh, and then do a bunch of, of speaking. The idea with tech ethicists really comes about that technology has reached a point right now that it's so magnificent, so powerful, that we need to step back and actually have uh, a diverse range of people thinking about it in a more thoughtful capacity. I think oftentimes we have people developing these, these platforms, developing these uh, technology that obviously we are uh, consuming at a, at a rapid pace and uh, enjoy. But at the same time, it might not always be their capacity uh, in addition, they might have blind spots to the ramifications or the externalities of this, uh, of this technology, about how it impacts us. And I think uh, Google Glass a few years ago is a classic example of that, right? You had the augmented reality of you know, right, wearing some type of technology, basically a computer on your face if you boil it down. And that was something that from the, from the tech industry standpoint, from Silicon Valley, was seen as a no-brainer. This is going to do extremely well. Everybody's going to be walking around with glasses on their face, right? That obviously didn't work. It didn't work because technology is not all about utility. And that's frankly a lot of what I do. Uh, I think a, there's a huge need for people outside of the traditional path to, to social media technology or Silicon Valley in general to think about the human side of, of technology. How does it impact our society? How does it impact our relationships? So going back to Google Glass, what we might have had a blind spot to, or what the tech industry, or what Google in this specific uh, example might have had a blind spot to, is how does this new fangled technology, how does that incorporate into our daily life, right? Uh, obviously, in hindsight, it looks, it looks uh, like a no-brainer. Well, of course it flopped, right? Nobody wants to, to feel like they're going to be recorded. That's going to trigger our Orwellian fear uh, in Western society. Uh, we might worry, again, these, these privacy, privacy concerns. Uh, in addition, we, we like the face-to-face -face contact. So that's really my larger, larger kind of sphere. And, and what I focus on is uh, I like to like to tell people that I, I want to utilize uh, technology and social media in a way that it maximizes the human existence. One of the problems that I've kind of seen is that we tend to view technology as a either or. Uh, we, we say that you are either a tech fundamentalist who is just going to embrace any, any form of AI or tech that's coming down the pathway without thinking about it, or you're a Luddite, right, who is rejecting it, who is wary that it's going to take all of our jobs. But I think there's a huge gray space, and I'm within that gray space, and I think most people are, where they're basically saying, yes, uh, technology is, is great, but at the same time, I still wanna have a relationship with my loved one. I still wanna have a relationship with my family. I still wanna to, want to think about how it's going to impact my life in general, my, my form of uh, self-identity. Technology is, again, we have to be agnostic toward, towards it. It's, it's neither good nor bad. It's a tool that we're trying to find what, what are the best ways to use it responsibly, ethically. Those are the challenges, and I think those are, those are one of the biggest challenges we have for the 21st century. And that's why, again, uh, I view this as my, my life's work, my life passion, to, to be a tech ethicist and try to push this idea forward.